Welcome Hello, to, everyone. Welcome into the Boys and Girls Show. We found a new home and a new co-host uh, with Jeff Cavanaugh, which I didn't have to go far for finding somebody else to do this with me because you and I have worked together before. So it felt very seamless uh, that you and I would do the show. And uh, thanks for doing it with me, bud. Yeah, I liked screwing it up right here at the very beginning as soon as we hit go because I forgot that you host the show. It's your show. So I was getting ready because we host your hosted show is hosted on my YouTube I was going to act like I was hosting the show, but I'm not. I'm just going to hang out. I'll see how it goes when I'm not hosting anything. Hello, Jane Slater. Are we allowed to call you the artist formerly known as Hurricane Jane? Yes, yes. You know, it's okay. so funny. I, you know, I recently had somebody bring that up about uh, the nickname. And for people that are new to your uh, channel or to the show, it actually originated at the fan. We were covering the Super Bowl and my former co-host Mark Elfenbein didn't think I was being fun enough and neither did Richie or Grego. And so I went to the media party and needless to say got, got shamelessly hammered. Uh, and then I believe we ended up at a strip club at one point and there was audio of me trying to rehabilitate a woman. Uh, not that they need rehabilitation. I'm all about do you. Uh, but they remixed it the next morning to that song, Here I Am, Rock Me Like a Hurricane. And then it just, it stuck with me. I love it. But that's the artist formerly known as. You can't call yes. her Hurricane Jane. You have to always have that prefix, formerly known as Hurricane Jane. We've evolved since then. And so have you. I love seeing you uh, use this platform and others to sort of just grow what you're doing and, you know, all the stuff that you're doing with the draft. It's awesome, Jeff. I'm a real adult now, almost damn near. So are you like Jane? It's hilarious to look at like your, uh, like your Instagram or whatever. And it'll be like, all right, here's Jane out with the girls. And look, they all look like they're uptown women. And then it's like, and now Jane has paint splatters on her oh. jeans as she's painting the ceiling. <laughs> you know, to tie this in with the Cowboys, Jeff, sometimes you've got to quit doing the same thing when it's not working, right? So in other words, it was fun for a while, but that was one chapter of my life. It's time to turn the page. And I wanted to get your thoughts, you know, as we talk about the Cowboys ahead of this draft, Stephen Jones saying that you don't win a Super Bowl in the off season. And my, of course, initial reaction was, well, what about the Rams and the Bucks? Your thoughts on just those comments in general and, and how the Cowboys have approached the draft in recent years, and if you necessarily agree with that. Uh, yeah, I think they're one of the best drafting teams in the league. Um, I think, I forgot what dumb stat I saw today. I think it was like in the last 10 years, they've drafted nine all pros. No one else has done more than six. So I guess their bread and butter. It's what they do. They draft and they develop probably to a fault. It's their bread and butter. If you hear dogs barking, that's just the cost of doing business when you do live things. Um but yeah, that's their thing. Their thing is we draft them, we develop them, we like our guys, it's who we're going to keep. And I think people have a valid criticism if you think maybe they should be a little more aggressive in adding other people's players. But the version that they do, they're really good at it. They're really good at it. Um, it'll be hard to be better on paper next year than this past year without Lyle Collins, Amari Cooper, Randy Gregory. But yeah, they're built. This is how they're built, and they're one of the better teams in the league at doing the homegrown thing. So for the Rams, great. But if Jaquaski Tart catches an interception, Matt Stafford threw him, uh, are the Rams doing it the right way? Like you know, that's I sports. I think the one thing that stands out to me too is it, it feels like they've got, you know, they they were very specific today, Jerry Jones's press pre-draft uh presser about the transparency and the accountability, how I Jerry had talked about wanting to empower people that are making decisions in that draft room. Like if that's your guy, that's fine, but you're accountable for them and wanting to empower them in their decisions. And I thought that that was really interesting because he said, you know, everyone has always said, I'm 
essentially, and I'm paraphrasing here, that he's essentially beating his hand on the table and saying, this is the guy we've got to take. But he wanted to point out that this was, in fact, a collaborative uh, effort that Will McClay puts the board together, but they go around the room and they make sure that everybody has input in it. And if you, and to your point, if you look around the league, this is with the exception of what, maybe the saints, this is a group that's been together two, three decades now that have been doing this, uh, with the same sort of personnel in there. There's, there's a continuity there. Um, and then I, I thought he said something interesting, even to Mike McCarthy, that Mike was more involved and kind of put Mike on the spot, right? Like this was more involved than you were in, in Green Bay, right? And so I don't know if you picked up on that at all, but I thought that was interesting. Yeah, because my understanding is that he was literally not involved at all and that he was fine with it. Like, and a lot of coaches I think are fine with it. It's like, I'm the coach. What? No, you guys, your job is to, and I think it would be incredibly healthy to say, no, your job is to scout players and to pick me the best ones. And then I'm going to coach them. That's my job. Um, but the way that the Cowboys do it, and it's probably because Jerry is the GM that isn't the same as any other GM in football, where a lot of them, I guess I'd have to look into what is the average background of a GM, but I would imagine that there's a scouting background or there's a personnel background there. And Jerry empowers and trusts his people, which I, I also think is a good plan, depending on who it is. And if it's a bad idea, you'll find out. And then you'll be like, oh, okay, that coach, we don't listen to that coach anymore. He, You thought you wanted this guy. Broadus tells me about a guy that uh, I think it was Bill Parcells when he was the coach. And one of the scouts, like Parcells loved an offensive lineman. And one of the scouts goes, Bill, this guy is everything you hate in an offensive lineman. Everything. He's like, nope, I love him. And they picked him and he couldn't play and he was out of the league. But I, I think it's really smart. Like right now, doesn't it? Don't you feel like the fan base is like, hey, if Dan Quinn thinks that a guy is good, believe him. Let him do it. Well, because he's earned that, right? In other words, what we've seen from him suggests that he knows what he's doing. Now, was that was it a bit of a flash in the pan since last year was his first year to do that? I mean, it feels like the years are sort of running together. So it's hard to believe this is only going to be year two for Dan because we saw such an epic turnaround, but we also saw such a laser sharp focus and commitment towards that side of the ball, which is what I kind of hope that they do offensively this year. I mean, every time I hear them talk about taking a wide receiver, I, I just, I look at them, I, I mean, a little incredulous because while I, I think that they've got a lot of faith in some of the depth that they have on the offensive line, if you had that much faith, then why didn't we see more of that last year? And then it was even Mike McCarthy uh, was asked about position flex of the offensive line, but saying, and you know, he's changed his answers too. And it's funny that you say that because I remember the first year him saying, you know, I'm of the opinion, you just bring the players to me and I'll make them work. And then now all of a sudden we hear like he's more empowered than he was in Green Bay. And then before it was, you know, you like position flex on the offensive line, but then saying the importance of having your starting five that all have their role. <laughs> so literally I could find even just in Jerry and Steven's statements today, they say one thing and then contradict themselves and say another. So I think it's really hard to, to I guess sometimes I feel like they talk in circles and you sort of need people who've been around the, uh, the franchise for a while to sort of help you read between the lines what they're actually saying. Uh, but I do think that when they've been successful in Dallas is when they've picked an offensive lineman in the first round, not the mid rounders, not the second rounders, the first rounders. And they are true to their position the way that Zach Martin has been, the way that Tyron Smith was in the, in the same way that Travis Frederick was. I think they've gotten a little too cute here uh, in recent years. That's in other words, thinking we're so good at the draft, we're going to find value when I don't think that that's an area you should skimp on. Yeah, and it's weird because I feel like every team probably does this to some extent where you're hyper-focused on your own individual results because you're right. When they picked Tyron Smith, congrats, you picked a Hall of Famer. When you picked Travis Frederick, if he had played a few more years, he was a Hall of Famer. Zach Martin is a Hall of Famer. Their first round has been great. Their later rounds, not so much. But at the same time, I think if you asked the analytic crowd, which I'd like to blend the two, like I'm a believer in numbers and data and trying to get it to tell you as best you can, like the odds of something working. I think the data crowd would tell you if prospects are anywhere close, the Cowboys better pick a wide receiver in the first round, not a guard, because just what it means to winning a good wide receiver means more than a good guard. 
But I mean, then that's real life. That's also sports is you have to balance all these different things where it's like, is that the best value? I don't know. But if we can't block a four man rush and we can't open holes against light boxes, then you can probably chalk up the season. And so like, that's all the stuff you've got to play with when you're going into a draft is figuring out what do all these things mean and which pick is going to help our individual circumstances the most go try to win the Super Bowl. Now, Jane, I have to put you on pause for two seconds. These are the rules when this thing is on my YouTube because there's super chats. I love people, it. People give us the things. Thank you to Marcus, who's contributing to the pool fund and wanted to say hi to Jane. Thank you to Nathan. Bigger drop off from first tier to second tier between guard and wide receiver. I feel like taking a first tier wide receiver and a second tier guard is better than the other way around. I don't disagree sure. with you. And Formula is my guy. This dude drops hammers in the super chat. Pool, fun, pool fund, Jeff rules, Jane rules. Love this. Which round will Captain Trade Down ride from Rene De Los Santos? First round. Formula, first time being drunk AF on your stream. Who are we picking, y'all? <laughs> We'll you know see. what's interesting? Well, you know what's interesting about that is somebody also brought up in the presser, and I didn't even think about this. Uh, when you look at the way the free agency played out for a lot of the wide receivers and what people were willing, you know, to give up for them, the value of getting your wide receiver in the first round because you get that fifth year option, giving you some flexibility. And just out of curiosity, I went and peeked. Okay, well, how many years? You know, we obviously have on Dak Prescott's contract three, and then if you look at the money that starts to affect your cap next year, his number jumps. So you have to really start thinking about that because remember, when we were talking about how contentious Dak Prescott's negotiations were, it was because he wanted a shorter deal that his agent, who was an absolute pain in my ass to deal with, but much respect. I'll tell you a funny story about that in a little bit. Uh, but he wanted to make sure that as obviously the, the coffer in the league started to expand, he wanted his client to be able to go back out there on that open market. When you look at the Deshaun Watson money, and then you look at probably what we're going to be talking about Kyler Murray soon, um, Lamar Jackson. He's going to get paid, but I have to think the Cowboys have to start thinking about that as they start thinking, well, you're going to have like guys like CeeDee Lamb coming around. And I think it's fair to say that, you know, Zeke's not going to get a third contract here. Uh, so they're going to be making some decisions, but you do have guys on this team that you're going to have to start thinking about. And Dak is actually one of them coming up. And so as you, so the advantage, I guess, is what I'm saying here is, if there's a guy that you really, really like, a wide receiver, it behooves you to take him in the first round because of the fifth-year option as opposed to the second round when you don't have that sort of flexibility with the cap. Yeah, wide receiver is wild right now because but now – What would you give up for like a guy like London Drake? Let's assume he's there at like 12-15. Flip it. Drake London. Drake. Um, nothing. Because like I, I just think for the Cowboys sitting at 24, there's a – there's a tier of wide receivers, which people don't even agree on this year. Like this is a weird draft. The Cowboys said they have, they, they said they'll have 14, 14 or 16. And I agree. Like, I don't think it's a top heavy draft. And so I think you just sit there and you see what happens because there's a decent chance that one of the guys that you think is a first round graded player of your 14 or 16 is going to fall in your lap because teams chase pass rushers and somebody's going to take a quarterback or two. And some guys that you don't think are first round or somebody else does, and they're going to pick them. So, like, I like Drake London, but I would be equally happy with Drake London as I would be with Traylon Burks, as I would be with Garrett Wilson, as I would be with, and I'm kind of alone on these two islands, but George Pickens at Georgia, Sky Moore. Uh, I think there's five or six of them. And so, if you want to get a kick-ass wide receiver prospect, I do think that you'll have to do it at 24 or by moving around. Maybe you move up in the second round or you move back and then up or whatever. But I think there's a tier of six or seven guys where I don't have a massive preference. They're just different. And after that, I do think there's a drop-off. So if, if you think that adding a step-in starter impact wide receiver is important, uh, I want him in the first round. We'll figure out left guard later. I guess – my line of thinking on that is your most valuable asset on this team right now is Dak Prescott. You got to keep him healthy and you got to keep him upright. And then he's coming off of two kind of bizarre injuries last year, right? Just kind of odd uh, for a guy that was so durable in his career, you know, so that, that, that gives me a little pause, but then in order to get that offense going and 
you know, do some of the things that they've wanted to do that they haven't, I feel like they've been ham hampered by not having that offensive line. Uh, I, I mean, even if you look at this team, it felt like when Travis Frederick retired, that's when we really started to see this team devolve. And I, Connor Williams was Connor Williams. And of course they've moved on from that, but I just feel like they need to, and I, I, you know, whether it's the first or the second round, I think they have to assign some real value to it. And to your point with those four for, uh, fifth round picks, I think that they can get creative with those picks and next year's picks in order to move up in the second round if you're looking to accomplish these things. But I think the first guys that we see off the board are going to be wide receivers and offensive linemen for Dallas. I'd be shocked. And whether it's offensive lineman, wide receiver, wide receiver, offensive lineman, I'd be shot, shocked if they went defensive player um, ahead of all of that. Well, I think that's how you can bridge kind of the two different things where it's like, all right, argue for wide receiver. All right, argue for guard because you don't have a left guard right now. Part of me, uh, and this will be a you assignment because you are the one with all the contacts and the people and I don't have access to people because they all hate me and fire me. Um, we study the film, so. Right, but I think to this. just listening from uh, to Stephen Jones, he said it multiple times. And I think this is a smart thing that the Cowboys either are doing or maybe they already keep it in mind all the time. But it's fun in the NFL to have extra picks on the third day of the draft. And he said, free agency, we're not done. So I wouldn't be surprised if I don't have the list of names in front of me, but that they think if it doesn't fall right for us to take a left guard somewhere, I bet they're back dealing with people where it's like, hey, when the draft is over, we're going to sign you. Because right. it no longer affects the comp pick formula. We're going to get three extra picks next year. Once the draft is over, it stops canceling each other out so we can sign people with no penalty. So if there's a capable journeyman left guard somewhere, and then the other thing is just what kind of investment does it take to get capable offensive line play? Does it have to be a first round play? play? And can he move over to the left side versus center? <laughs> with that? I, mean, I said, can Joe Looney step up and play over on the left side instead of center? Where, where isn't he still hanging around in the first guard? At least he gave us levity in the locker room. I thought he, I think he quit. I think he went up to go to the Giants for a second. And he was like, crap, JG's still here. So he oh, retired. He's, he's out. He's out. <laughs> Javier uh, wants to no, know. I mean, and look, I don't disagree with you. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to step over. I was just saying, remember, we didn't, we didn't realize that they weren't done either until we got to training camp. Some of the defensive players that they brought along, I thought were some really nice pieces that they added. And again, I give a lot of credit to Dan Quinn for getting as much as he did out of those players. Now, do you have as much confidence in Kellen Moore that he's able to elicit the same sort of bang for your buck from some of these offensive players that would be coming off the street? Not necessarily. I think the biggest wild card, and Jerry said it today, and I know every time Jerry says something for a lot of the fan base, it's just shut up, kick him in the nuts. He doesn't know anything he's talking about. But it's something that I've been saying kind of since the season ended is did the offensive line let the team down the last two months of the season? Absolutely. Uh, did Dax play, let the team down the second half of the season? Absolutely. But we can draw a very clear line of when it started. He had a shoulder thing in training camp, and then he strained his calf. After he strained his calf, everything went downhill. It's all tied together. And if Dak has an off season where he is now healthy and ready to rock, there's no reason to believe that just him is what's going to be the biggest difference maker and how your offense is going to play. Just his conviction and confidence in, oh my God, you're dropping seven guys all the time and rushing four. I run and slide. Oh, you did it again. I run and slide. I run and slide. Like he can fix a lot of this. Now, there are other things that you will have to figure out. You have to figure out how to get good wide receiver play. You have to make sure that you can protect him. Uh, but I, like, I just think that is the biggest thing is that Dak wasn't right. And that was your offense. I also feel like, and he won't admit this, but not that he had the case of the yips, right? But like he was coming off a huge injury and came back admirably. And then all of a sudden it's an injury that's, not unique to football. So there's like a big question mark. So he comes back from that and then you get the calf strain. And I just wonder if some of that self doubt starts coming into your mind. You're like, each time I'm like rehabbing my body back. And this is a guy that was so durable and hadn't really dealt with the injury. I mean, he'd taken the job from every guy who'd been injured. Remember? And so I just wonder if there was just like a little bit of that going on in his head 
because they started, I mean, I was literally making the case for this team based on the way that they had played like on the road and the way they came out against Tampa and the San Diego, uh, the Chargers game, I thought on the road against Staley's defense, I thought was one of their signature games last year. But it just, I just, it just even seemed uncharacteristic that final quarterback draw, like the where, like his head wasn't in the game. And that just, it felt different for me. And then when he obviously pulled out of the Pro Bowl and then we found out about this other kind of odd injury on the non throwing shoulder, I just, I just, I get, I just wondered if he needed to reset. We all do, right? You know, you're going, 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 you're feeling good. And then it's like you get a couple setbacks. It's almost like you're like a little gun shy. And I just, I wonder if some of that was at play towards the end of the season. I don't know that. I don't think he'd ever even admit it if that was the case. But to your point, I think it's probably got to help that he is getting this off season and he is getting some time with the guys in the building. And as Mike McCarthy said, it finally feels like a real football off season. Yeah. And they're going to need to figure out who is their starting left guard. Cause that's the one thing is that I don't believe that they have confidence in the people in the building. Cause if they did, Connor Williams wouldn't have gone back on the field after sitting down a couple of weeks. It's like, who we got to bench this left guard. Let's put in the McGovern kid. And then like three games later, it was like, get him out. You can't, you can't sell that to your fan base. Yeah. I just, I felt like they got cute last year with the offensive line, right? Like the way they'd sub in the guys. And it's like, what are we doing here? Like, I remember us bringing up a couple of scenarios and Mike telling us that he's not playing fantasy football. <laughs> it's like, but that's what, it's what it felt like at times. And I, and I would imagine that some of that, and I don't know this for sure, but that could have been coming from the top where the front office is saying, we want to get cute this off season. Let's see what we got to move a couple of guys around. And I just didn't know if it was like some of the smartest moves. Javier wants to know who wins between a bear and a gorilla in a fight. And now obviously if it's a full grown grizzly bear, the answer is a grizzly bear. I fear the gorilla more, but you're talking about a grizzly bear having like 400 pounds on the gorilla. What about it's the brute strength of the gorilla though? I don't think the brute strength of a gorilla is anywhere near the brute strength of a bear. The only thing that scares me about the gorilla is I'm not sure the shape of a bear paw and the thumb is a huge advantage. And a gorilla is smart enough to use a weapon if there's one laying around, I bet. So like he's smarter, but a bear is just big old dumb power. Brawn over brains. I mean, yeah, I've seen Planet of the Apes. So I think that's like my depiction of the gorilla here. But then I'm also going back to the Leonardo DiCaprio movie uh, and also Legends of the Fall. Remember, the bear got the best of both of those guys. Uh, I don't remember Legends of the Fall. But I do know that I guess I guess technically if I were power ranking, I would have to put the gorilla higher, even though I don't believe it, because I do say that any animal that doesn't have opposing opposable thumbs that well i say that they have to weigh less than me that i could take them so i don't respect the bear because they don't have thumbs do they do bears have thumbs that's they your question of the day claws. yeah but does the claw made up of four fingers and a thumb i don't think they have thumbs i think it's the four it's a four and yeah, so it wouldn't a have a formula says i don't know how to troll bobby on here but i gotta say jeff you're much better than him jane relay the message really hurtful how are you talking about the mvb that right that way Bobby Belt is a freaking animal. He is an absolute stud. Uh, wow, a lot of people think it's the gorilla. No way. Me too. Okay, bear. I, I got to look at a bear claw now. I'm just curious. Hold on. Full-grown grizzly bear size. Well, I'm looking at it. It's five, but it doesn't look like he truly has. It's more of like a claw. There's five. Okay, so a bear gets to about, what, 600 pounds. Um, biggest gorilla. What's the biggest gorilla? Like, is a silverback the biggest? Yeah. I mean, have you seen these silverback silver? gorilla weighing in at, let's see here. Oh, just give me, you guys know what I want. If I look up silverback, I want to know how big they are and how good they fight. Well, there's literally a whole, uh, this is what I love about Arizona animal staff, uh, online proper uh, attribution here. Uh, there would be, let's let's get back. Uh, let's see. A, a silverback gorilla is apparently very fast, strong, and has a long arm span. But there's no way a silverback could defeat the much larger and faster grizzly bear in a fair fight. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so size. considered peaceful creatures. They do not attack humans. Grizzlies are aggressive. 
Cool. Grizzlies are aggressive. Silverbacks are mostly docile. I'm showing eight foot versus six foot. Grizzly being bigger, and I'm showing 800 pounds versus 485 pounds. Grizzlies got 300 pounds on them. Wow. Well, I silverback screwed. Silverback uh, doesn't have a chance. The grizzly has 20 claws for those uh, that are curious at home, and it's uh, two hands, two feet, four opposable thumbs for the uh, grizzly bear. Oh. They do but have thumbs. No, How about no, that? For the silverback gorilla. Sorry. Grizzly bear has oh. 20 claws. It's the two hands, two feet, four opposable thumbs for the gorilla. Okay. What is it? The uh, Daniel Tosh where he did the whole Snapple bit where he spins off the Snapple uh, lid. Remember, it's like his first stand up. And he's like, oh, Snapple. Well, at least I learned something. That's how I feel about some of these. Like, Is there something yeah. under the lid on the Snapple? Is that what it is? Yeah, like you're always like. You know, how many times do you have to, does the sun rotate around the earth? I don't know. What was sun rotate around the earth? None. The earth exactly. rotates around the sun. Exactly. What? Um, I'll never get a pop culture reference ever. So, like, I don't know what Daniel Tosh said, but I remember he was funny. Um, I just don't get where men's, like, when they say, like, you know, when you're laying next to a guy and you're like, what is he thinking? Somebody I don't know that. Shit that y'all think about. I don't know that feeling. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. <laughs> yet i don't know that feeling yet you never know <laughs> but there used to be a beer that i think it was the bottles when you took off the top it would have like two or three pictures in it and those pictures would make a phrase or a word or something but i forgot what kind of beer it is that's my contribution to the show today i'm talking snapple you're talking beer you know it makes sense hmm I'm talking Snapple. You're talking beer. That's what I love about it. How have your pool yeah. parties been now that it's been warming up, by the way? Uh, lovely. I heat the pools for the pool party. Thanks to everybody in the super chat. They're heating my pool, basically. That's um, so great. Yeah, because people pretend that 74-degree water is like death. No, so it's cold. Yeah, you got to heat it. Get it up to about 83, and then we rock and roll. I just need the super chats to help fund these animals that I keep uh, picking up off the street. So. Are you going to keep that dog? I think so. Pepper, pepper. You know what I love about this dog? I've had it. So for people that are not familiar with the story, I was on my way to do uh, one of my side hustles yesterday and I'm driving under I-30 here in Dallas. And I think it's a fox in the middle of the street and it's dodging cars. And I get out of the car and I'm a little bit afraid to touch it because I'm like, is this thing rabid? Like, what the hell is this? So this guy sees me out there looking like a crazy lady in the middle of the street. I was like that girl yesterday. We put the dog in my car. I get to the shoot. I'm like, I can't take the, the dog in because apparently there's a blue and gold Macaw in there. I'm like, all right. Well, I said, well, if this dog is still here after I'm done with this shoot, I got to like take it to the shelter. I got to like take it to a vet. I got to do something with it. But I, it's my duty now. So I get done. I circle, can't find it for 15 minutes. I come all the way home. I'm sitting down to eat lunch. And my boss on that shoot's like, we found the dog in an abandoned church. And I'm like, damn it, God. So I get in my car. I drive over there. And a dog of the Lord. Yes, yes. Jesus wanted me to keep him or her. And so we take her to find out she's a microchip. She does. But the people hang up on us. Then we call back. They say it's not their dog. Wrong number. And at that point, I'm like, damn it. Now I've got a semi-blind dog. It's like a little schnauzer terrier. Uh, but it literally laid its head on me all night long. Slept perfect. Checked out at the vet, works perfectly on a leash, and I left her to go to work today for seven hours, came home. She did not use the bathroom in the house. I took her outside, immediately went. I'm like, this is a really good dog. <laughs> so, Oh, you are going to hate the new dog that you get that does go to the bathroom in the house. You're going to be like, oh, oh no, I've become okay. accustomed to you being potty trained. Yeah, I got to assume that not everyone knows. I was literally going to get my first dog, and it has been in the works for the last three months, and I'm picking her up next weekend. And so now I'm just zero to a hundred per usual. And I'm going to have two dogs, one baby, one semi-blind old lady. That's perfect. You have to have, I getting the young terrorist dog to keep my 13 year old dog young is, was great. You're going to have a little annoying dog to keep the half blind dog uh, <laughs> active. Kevin Gray sports first ever super chatter here. Love the show. Who's your favorite wrestler and why? I think Jane's is Charlotte flair. I'm obsessed. Hey, KG. Um, I don't have a favorite wrestler because I don't know who wrestles anymore, but once upon a time, it was Shawn Michaels. I am HBK. I'm the heartbreak kid. You see the hair. You see the flow coming in. How do I, oh I see it? Eh. 
Eh. You are getting like a little bit of the man bun there. I'm working on it. I knew I like when we worked together, you had the shaved head look going. Yeah. Now I got some hair. You got to kind of. Do ladies love this, Jeff? I have no idea. By the way, you have a doppelganger. So there is a wine bar down the street. Shout out to Holton at Barcelona. This guy literally could be your twin. I, I meant to take a picture, but I was cracking up. Same hair, same facial, uh, same uh, kind of dry sense of humor. Kind of an ugly guy. Kind of an ugly guy, but real nice. Handsome guy. Sweet. But he's literally your doppelganger. But he's he, right around the corner. You got to go check him out because I know you hang out in my hood. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't want to meet somebody who's like me. I would hate me. Yeah, that would be terrible. Like, he's out here thinking he can just be all looking like me and stuff. I would meet him and tell him he has to alter something. I don't know so what. how does this super chat thing work, by the way? Um, people just basically make a donation in order to have you read a question or whatever. And, like, if there aren't any, then I'll pick regular questions out of the chat. But if there's people who are contributing to the cause and showing their love and appreciation and support for the show, What's then that? you read what they've got going on. And then if, uh, if I feel like it, I'll give Jane some of it. Maybe. I don't know if it's in the contract. <laughs> I haven't seen the contract. We'll have to see. True fan engagement. I love that about you, Jeff. It's so much easier. Like when I quit, I immediately <laughs> jumped back into like a structured thing. Like, yeah, I'm going to do this show at this time. And I did like three or four of them and I'm like, this is, this sucks. This isn't what I wanted to do. And so now I literally just, whenever I feel like it, I hit go live and I talk to people in the chat. I love that. How we do it. That's, That's so fun. Nice. You should start a channel. See, I'm, I'm such a, a traditional journalism geek that uh, I'm still working for the man, you know, not all of us, have, not all of us are brave enough to jump without the parachute, bud. I may work for the man again at some point, um, but I would work for the man in a way that I feel properly valued and uh, appreciated. That didn't feel uh, petty at all. <laughs> you know, sometimes you spend a lot of time telling people things that could be done and when they don't get we done. Should just, we should rebrand the show, The Fan Rejects, since we both... Uh... I didn't get fired. <laughs> I didn't... Our show... I, I, what's the word? Uh, the quit and the fired. New direction is, I think, what we went. <laughs> but to yeah. be fair, I much enjoy what they replaced us with in our show. <laughs> when okay, when you and Elf left, what immediately went into middays? Kevin and Corey, or no, it was you guys at first. It was, the yeah, you took my job. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry it, about it that. It was you and uh, uh, Gavin and Vasic, right? Maybe, but it was really just a long con because what I knew, I knew they were going to let you go. And so I was like, what I'm going to do is make sure we get that spot. And then I'm going to build up this brand real big. And then I'm going to pull the, the rug and just leave and destroy this station for firing Jane. King Shadow says YouTube is fired. Didn't get the notification. Much love, Jeff and Jane. Thank you. And Haley 94 where it used to have a Gregory in there, I believe, but it had, he had to take that out. Super chat equals throwing coins into a fountain. And we appreciate oh. everybody who throws the coins in the fountain. I love that. Yeah. See, I'm learning so much. Thank you for bringing me along with this new platform. Mm -hmm. Yes. The um, boys and girl and boy show. <laughs> I think that's what it has to be called because the boys and girl is the cowboys and girl is clearly a reference to you. So the boys and girls like show. You're talking the boys and it's always boys and it's just a girl that typically does this show. Well, I told you I need to be properly valued. And if it's the boys, which is clearly cowboys and girl, which is clearly you, I'm not referred to in any way, shape or form in the title of the show. So it's going to be the boys and girl and boy show. Well, we'll see my contract that we're still uh, working through since you are actually seeing our metrics here in our super chat. <laughs> We have to jump the Eagles and give a third and fifth to move up to get Jordan. Jordan Davis? Stop trying to give away draft picks to draft a nose tackle. If he falls to 24, fine. Will you vlog stuff like vacations and events? Sure. Uh, wait, who's that for? I guess I'm the one without a job. So I this, guess is that was this is essentially Jeff's OnlyFans account. Like He just literally will like whatever you want, <laughs> he is ready to do. 
Yeah, I was thinking about doing like a pool, like a pool side show weekly where I just talk about how I have a pool and be in the backyard with a setup and we gotta get you sponsored if we're gonna do that. Oh, that is a great point, Jane. Thanks for the reminder. My goodness, Jeff, you idiot. Um, because I do want to tell you about <laughs> our partners at Bet Online, because Bet Online is badass, but I have to find my email with my copy points. Just know that Bet Online is badass. And you need the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V. They're the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Found it! The only thing I would say is don't bet on the Texas Rangers, but feel free to bet on Luke and the Mavs because they're about to win an effing championship, and it's going to be incredible. So you can't bet on the Rangers, but you can bet on the Mavs. And whoever else you want to bet on, maybe you want to parlay it up, see if you can get rich off six bucks or something. That's my kind of wagering. Super easy to get started. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and use our promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. See, better believe we are high production here. You know, go for the highly produced shows on your radio dial. Come here for just us figuring this shit out. Yeah, come here for Jeff to forget, almost forget to do the read in the show, which is how we get paid for the show. How about that? We're, we're going we're gonna to just be collecting all the coins in the fountain. Everybody go to bet online right now. Use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V. I don't even know if it'll count because it's this late in the show that I said it, you know? So Jane needs a new hairbrush or something. We need it in the I super want, like chat. I said, do you want me to bring the dog in here? Do you want to see this poor little dog? Like, what's it going to take? Oh, oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah. Jane's now begging for funds. I like this. I support this. Yeah. Let's see what happens in the chat. Hey guys, what would you like to see Jane do for uh, donations? <laughs> I bet that'd be clean in the chat. I mean, do y'all want to see feed pics? Oh my God. It is so weird to me. The male urge for feet. And I don't know that it's all males. There's actually one in my Instagram. Uh, sometimes when I'm out with friends. I fire it up because, um, well, I, you know, I'll, I'll just read one for you. I'll have to uh, heavily, um, it's pretty great. I'll have to heavily edit this, but um, I can't block him. I got to be honest because I find him so entertaining. Until he crosses that line and just sends you a really weird something. All right. Uh, I would blank so much to your feet right now, but it's a huge game tomorrow. The bottoms of your feet and your toes have made me over a thousand times. Uh, bros totally the most legendary to this OMG. The toes made me do it. Huh. And you're good with that. That's interesting. Your angel feet make me Every day to be for real, uh, it feels so good. This the type of Christmas card I'd pay a hundreds for. I really love that <laughs> I can go cut out all these individual pieces of audio to use later of you reading these things and then use them out of context later. Javier sent in a super chat and he said, I want to see her elbows. Tell her to show us. Oh, you like that? <laughs> I don't have a foot fetish, but like feet are cool. I'm cool with it's feet. So bizarre I'm not... to me. It's so bizarre that people pay. Did y'all ever watch Orange is the New Black where they monetized selling women's underwear from prison? No, but my friend Aaron was talking about how times were getting tough. And she was like, do you know where I should, would get started to try to sell my used underwear? And I was like, not really, but maybe like set up a stand outside of Skellig, like a lemonade stand. Just kind of have all your wares out there on the table and just see what happens. What is it? Bad Bobby or whatever. Cash me outside, girl. I just saw she's making $50 million off her OnlyFans account. Yeah, Jeff Bannister's daughter just announced that she's joining OnlyFans. Like, Former here I am mentoring young girls to go to journalism school and make sixteen five in their first market and, like, pay their dues. I just don't feel like... I'm, I can mentor this next generation because anything I say to them, like hard work, they're going to be like, no, I can just go on OnlyFans. I can do we, super chats. Look, like the OnlyFans thing, use what you got to get what you want. If your goal is to be monetized and you're totally cool with showing whatever it takes to get a whole bunch of money, shit, go. Why not? 
If you don't care what people think about it, let it rip. Radical, thank you in the super chat. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm not judging. I think it's fascinating. I just, I don't know if, I, even when I've tried to do like the small influencer thing where, you know, hey, sponsor this, whatever. And they'll, I mean, what they'll pay is crazy. I don't even feel comfortable taking like a solo photo of, of myself telling somebody I love a product. It's unless I like really, really love something. So I don't know if I could post constant content. Like I, I, I actually think we underappreciate how much work they're putting into their content. I think it's interesting that you're like, I'm not comfortable taking a picture with a product to make money, but I'm totally comfortable with this dude in my DMs that's talking about all of his <laughs> explosions of fun at my feet. I uh, just think it's so entertaining that he takes the time to send it. I mean, some of them are really creative, by the way. I'm like, you really, you, you I think you should pivot and really get into creative writing here. Like, you're not properly well, like monetizing your talents here, bud. Darren Jackson, Jane is awesome. Javier, now I want to see Jeff's elbows. I have two. Um, so hot. This one has like a, no, it's this one. This one has like a little soft spot in it. I've clearly damaged it at some point in football over the years. And so I can kind of push into it and it's not as, like there's missing cartilage or something. So if you're way into a broken elbow, that's mine. Interesting. I have uh, a bruise on one of mine from a fight in a church parking lot in high school. I'm sorry. I got in a church, uh, a, a brawl in the church parking lot in Rollette. And now, was it just the location of a church or was it like after service? We were playing volleyball there and uh, the girl's name uh, was Catfish. And she said she was going to knock the smile off my face. Well, needless to say, she did not. And I got called Tyson for the rest of the year. Oh, Hurricane yeah. Jane out here throwing right hooks. Yeah. Uh, Fresh Prince and the Fresh Prince five one two five dollars for the Eagle Rowlett Eagle. Whoop whoop! I'm an Allen Eagle. We're just all Eagles around here. I didn't know That's that. It. Mm -hmm. Hey, like you can say bye to everybody whenever you want to. Literally, Jane. Like you could have done it thirty minutes ago, and I'd been cool with it. But I'm glad you didn't because I forgot I hadn't done the read yet for Bet Online. Use the promo code Believe B L E A V. Please get fifty percent bonus. But you can also go as long as you want because I don't have anything else going on. King Shadow, I'll keep it civil and ask where the dog is. Okay, you want to see the dog? Because I'm going to leave you here pretty soon because I've got to go get the dog. Hold on. Wait, you have to go get... How, wait, you're going to leave me soon to go get the dog, but you're going to get the dog right now. That doesn't make sense unless you're like going to get the new dog, the other dog. But right now you're going to get Pepper. And then you missed my earlier chat, had to double dip. Sorry, G Do. What did I miss? I didn't try to miss any. If I missed you, I'm sorry. And I love you. You have to see this sweet little blonde dog. We'll just wait until Jane gets back. Look at this little nugget. Hi, Pepper. I like I like that you said Pepper. I don't know if we're going with Pepper because I like to say Pepper, but not as Pepper. I like to say Pepper. Hey, Pepper. Pepper. Well, I, call it, I call it a little pep. Hey, Pepper. Look at this sweet little thing. Somebody just didn't want her back. And now I'm now I'm stuck with her. <laughs> well, at first I thought she was really blind, but then I saw you posting video and I'm like, well, she can kind of see. She's got I the bowl of No, she's got pretty she's got pretty severe cataracts. Oh. But she's just the sweetest thing. Doesn't she kind of look like a little fox? Yeah. Cataracts is the one where you do weed, right? <laughs> no. Isn't that what people say when they have weed, when they have oh, cataracts? I think it is supposed to help them a little bit. Well, oh. okay. This dude's literally sent in a super chat and said, not a feet guy, but might, might as well see them feets. That's something the feet guy says. That is 100%. Oh, that's glaucoma, not cataracts. <laughs> glaucoma. Oh. All right. All right. Well, I actually do have to go. Um, next time we'll talk a little bit more sports, but this has been fun. This is easy. Yeah. Isn't it glorious? I love it turns it. out you can just kind of do what you want, at least until you leave to go do good morning football or something. Oh but God. Let's not start that rumor. Until All then. Right. Um, hold on. I have to tell people something real quick. Um, hold on. I forgot how it goes. And it's uh, something I say every day. Remember, remember, you have no idea what anybody's going through. So be cool to everyone. I love you. And bye. And Bernard says, sup, Jeff, Jeff, miss you on the draft show. And now all I hear is Brian say, see what, see, that's what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> all right, Jane. See you next week.